Colonel S.S. Sodi, defense analyst, is joining us at this point on the broadcast. Colonel Sodi, um, some relief now coming in that Russia has agreed to a ceasefire in, in four different cities of Ukraine, but more crucial for us is Sumy, where a lot of Indian nationals and students are still stuck. It's a real welcome news and the efforts of our Prime Minister and the country has really paid rich dividends by Russia agreeing to, you know, have a ceasefire in these four places which is seeing the maximum devastation now and by declaring ceasefire and the opening of the humanitarian corridors, many of these, uh, you know, uh, 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 citizens who are holed up there, especially our own, will be able to leave the war affected area and can be well on their way home. Well, having said that, there's another issue which we also have to look at is that definitely the whole credit goes to our leadership and the world community at large who have been able to, you know, convince Russia and Ukraine to open this Germantian corridor. There is one strategic angle to it also. You see, Uday, what, has, uh, what Russia has done is that Russia has sent in heavy armored and mechanized columns into Ukraine. Now, in the military doctrine, we are taught that uh, the attack to defender ratio is always 3 to 1 in planes. Now, ideally, with a standing army of 2 lakh uh, Ukrainian army, Russia should have sent in 6 lakh of its troops. But Russia just sent in 2 lakhs, which is the same strength as the Ukrainian army. Now, what Russia has done, Russia has encircled all the important towns of Ukraine, including Kiev and Kharkiv. That in the military doctrine is called isolation. Now, isolation means that no reinforcement or supplies can ent enter into the area which is being isolated. The next step is investment. Where what is done is, since these uh, areas are, are isolated, the morale uh, of the people inside starts going down because the supplies are not there. They have this feeling of, the, of being holed up. And in the investment finally leads to the capture of the place. Now, this opening of the uh, corridors by the uh, announcing of the ceasefire and uh, you know, allowing the uh, people who are sta standing there to leave is, has got two significance. One, obviously, that the people, including Indians who are standing there, will leave immediately. Second, it shows now that this war is in its decisive stage. Once these innocent civilians who are not, you know, with the either side are out of these areas, now Russia will bombard, will invest these isolated areas with full force and vigor, which will finally lead to the capture of these places. So this humanitarian corridor by Russia, uh, uh, which has been announced, has to be seen, you know, with two dimensions. One is the people who will leave that place. That's a very good news. And second, now the battle is, now the war is in the decisive stage. Absolutely. Major Mohammad Ali Shah, defense expert, also live with us. Major Mohammad Ali Shah, how do you view this decision the UK has taken to mitigate the financial pressures created by Russia's invasion? Oh, absolutely. This had to happen, and but Russia had calculated it very well. Now, coming back to, uh, once again, because this is going to, this bubble is bound to happen. Coming back to Sumi again, because it's a matter of concern for you and as Colonel Sodi rightly said. And no, uh, let, let's just stick a bit uh, to the, uh, the UK assistance as well, uh, uh, Colonel Sodi, because uh, this is, of course, a big development coming in. Financial constraints are there. India has also provided Ukraine humanitarian aid. And now the UK injecting this very sizable amount uh, into the Ukraine economy, what will be the impact? $100 million, Colonel Sodi. Well, Uday, see this, uh, you know, uh, uh, these uh, are basically cosmetic and symbolic gestures like, uh, you know, uh, promising to send few MiG-29 from Poland or now UK uh, planning to uh, send them money. Well, this is not going to make a major difference to this ongoing war. See, the NATO and the USA has to understand very well that now the war has escalated to a very, very dangerous level where the nuclear arsenal of Russia are all ready. The uh, nuclear submarines of the Russian Navy a few days back sailed out from the Barents Sea, which is in the Arctic Ocean, towards the uh, warm waters of Atlantic Ocean, where they are poised to take on USA and the Western European countries. Now, the war is at a very dangerous stage, I would say. Rather than, you know, uh, sending uh, whether, you know, this money or uh, weapons from the NATO and uh, UK and USA, the time now is to ensure that this war finishes. Yes, definitely. You know, like India has done a very noble gesture by sending uh, humanitarian supply in terms of essential supplies and medicines. That is what is needed. And uh, all this help coming from USA, UK and the NATO is a clear indication that they want to keep the fire burning. So the war carries on for a long, long time and Russia exhaust is exhausted both militarily and economically. So that we also have to understand 
that every person or every country has a limited financial capacity for whatever it may be. Everyone has got their own levels. Now, though, when Russia started the war on 24th February, it had 600 billion US dollars in forex and gold reserves. But see, every day that amount is denuding because war is a very, very costly and expensive business. So, uh, USA and NATO know very well that a day will come when Russia will not be able to fight further because financially it will wear itself out. That is what it is exactly doing by giving these kind of assistance to Ukraine because they want the fires of war to, to burn till a long time till Russia wears itself out. Okay, more breaking news now coming in on the broadcast. The Indian rupee has slumped to a record low against US dollar today. The Indian rupee stands at 76.88 against the US dollar. Major Mahmoud Arisha is with us. Major Mahmoud Arisha, the economic impact being felt in India too. Uh, the rupee is slumping to a record low against the dollar today. Uh, Uday, it's really sad. It's very unfortunate. The world economy, as Colonel Sodi rightly brought out, the war is a very, very expensive business for destruction, that too. So, yes, certainly the ruble also has fallen down. In fact, ruble was almost touching close to a rupee, and rupee is falling down as compared to the dollar. It's going to go down further, Uday. And, you know, I read in the, in the news again, in Business Standard, that, you know, they are, the fuel prices are going to go up by almost 30, 30 rupees per liter again. So it's going to be the economy going to drop down. But at the end of the day, there are certain economies who will actually take out an opportunity out of, out of adversity. And these countries are going to be US and China. So yes, when the world economy is going to suffer, Russia had planned it very well. Russia knew they would be sanctioned. They would be, their economy would be going down as Colonel Sodi has already brought up the statistics very well. So now, when, especially when talking about Sumi, when they have announced there would be a ceasefire over there, there would be a ceasefire, it would be a golden chance over there to actually get into talks and get these two countries on the table because this has to be stopped, otherwise it's just disaster, it's just devastation and the entire world then, it's, though it may not lead to a world war, but at the end of the day, every single person will be affected by this and the economy is going to go down further and further and, they, and after the economy was down. So yes, there will be unemployment, there would be, uh, they, they would think would be go, the, the prices will go up skyrocketing. So it's going to be very tough for common people like you and me who are not even remotely close yes. to the present in those areas. Okay, more breaking news now coming in. Let's go straight across. Eight people are dead in overnight Russian shelling in Kharkiv. Several residential buildings have also been damaged. Colonel Sodi, the assault continues in Kharkiv. Uh, eight people dead in overnight shelling by Russia. Several residential buildings too reportedly damaged. Yes, Uday, this is exactly what I was uh, speaking sometime back also. This is the phase of investment going on. Investment in military doctrine means that the area which has been isolated, that is now bombarded heavily to uh, clear off the remnants. And the next step after investment is capture. So now, you know, all these buildings which are being raised and uh, the government buildings which are being targeted, this is all part of investment by the Russian forces. We also have to see that Russia has uh, uh, done this war with heavy armored and mechanized columns. You know, till uh, some time back, people used to talk, now the entire uh, the modern warfare will be drone-based, artificial intelligence-based. No, this Russia-Ukraine war has proved that the basic teachings of the military doctrine cannot change. The armored, the infantry will always remain the cutting edge of any army. And Russia has once again shown, showed this, that for whatever technological advancements we may do, finally it will, the, it will be the troops and the equipment on ground. And now all these important cities, including Kiev and Kharkiv, which have been isolated since last few days, and you know, uh, uh, this humanitarian corridor has been made where people are now coming out. Now the war is moving towards a, towards a very decisive phase. It is a matter of few days now when Kiev and Kharkiv will fall. You see, Kherson has already fallen a few days back. Now from the, uh, one more thing Uday I would like to tell you is, that how has Russia planned the military offensive? Well, Russia has planned the military offensive by four prongs. The first prong is a core. Now a core in a military uh, doctrine or a military terminology means a formation or a body of troops which have about 40,000 to 50,000 troops in them. So core level attack came through Belarus towards Kiev. Another core level attack came to the uh, east of the Dnieper River. The third core level attack came from the Donbass area. And the fourth prong came from the Black Sea towards Kherson and Odessa and Melitopol. Now, if you remember, in 2014, when Russia annexed Crimea, 
it ensured that whatever small and uh, navy ukrainian uh, people had that navy was totally destroyed so as on day as on date rather on 24th february when uh, russia started this ukraine war uh, U- ukraine had just no navy with them so this is how russia has planned the okay. war and russia has not planned the war since last few months it has yes. been planning this war since 2014 yes all right we've run out of time my thanks to our guests for joining us